Is show business has depressed you? No, show business keeps me alive oh, for another day. Oh, now I am really sad for you. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on with you? I live to tweet, Felicia. Yeah, that's frightening. So what happened was that I had to break up with one of the people that I'm seeing. Right. And uh, um, so yeah. what happens is that... <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yes. Then I go into like a spiral. Right. And, uh, you know, I told my ex-husband today that I had to break up with one of the people I'm seeing. And he's like, I'm not into polygamy. I'm I, like, it's polyamory, <laughs> moron. I didn't say moron because right. I'm working on myself. But, and he was um, handing you a check. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yes. Lucky he was. Those alimony checks keep my tongue right <laughs> Then I sent out like this really self-loathing, like, whoosh, like heartbreaking tweet, and immediately like got 200 new followers. As you <laughs> so had planned like, in the first place. I was like, totes worth it. I think the whole point of polyamory is so when you break up with someone, you know what I mean? That you're like, oh, everything's all good. This is what we say, polyamory, loving many. And I'm not going to be all dogmatic about it. God bless you all. If you're into monogamy, good luck. I'm just saying what works for me uh -huh. is that love doesn't divide. I have enough love for you and for Jake in the control room and for both of our guests and, and for the other guy at, in the control room <laughs> <laughs> whose name escapes That's me right at this enough moment. Love, That's but not enough memory. Right. That That's the way. Open that bottle him. of warmth right there, Susanna. <laughs> <And> <laughs> That's but how you do it. The point is that the love doesn't divide. Uh -huh. So it's like it hurts, but it feels a little better knowing that I'm going to still get laid on Sunday. How long have you been divorced? Three, almost three years. No, I, November, November 1st. I want to hear your stand when you're at year seven of divorce about polyamory. Because mm. at that point, you're going to be like, I can only do one of these fucks. You know what <laughs> I mean? Because like, well, for me, I feel like I'm on the other side. Like, I didn't date someone for a year. And then I went out with someone at the beginning of summer. And then you know how men always get at that three-month part? Like, when women were like, well, maybe I want you to be my boyfriend. And men are like, why do we have to define it? Why do we have to? And do, why, why do we have to define Well, here's why. Because when I'm at a party with you I want to say to all my friends this is my boyfriend because it's easier than this is a guy that I fuck in a non-committal way when I don't have my children yeah. you don't just get to stick your dick in everybody right. polyamory is you everything's discussed everything's negotiated everything is out in the open yeah. it that, means that, that makes me wet when I negotiate before I have sex <laughs> <laughs> so I would like to introduce one of uh, one of the best writers I know. Oh. He is a humorist. He is a storyteller. I have known this gentleman probably since we're in our early 20s. <gasps> Please give it up, everyone, and get excited for Mr. Dylan Brody. Yay! Yes. So excited. I like to give it up, everybody, as though I we know. have a, a, a vast studio audience just waiting to applaud. We, we who just do decided have not a vast to. She's actually talking about the, all the personalities in my head. Yeah. And Excellent. they're all applauding you right yes. now. I, I yes. can feel their warmth. It's going. We're going to call this the genius show. Yeah. Yes. Because seriously, between you, and thank you so much for being here, and our other guest, there's so much IQ in this room that maybe it'll explode. We should hope so. Maybe. Um, so the other guest we have with us today is a very longtime friend of mine. We haven't known each other since our 20s, but uh, we've covered a lot. <laughs> um, her name is Amy Dresner. She's a columnist for The Fix. She is a writer for The Fix. She also uh, writes for Amy Alcon, who's the advice <laughs> goddess, and she's just a all-round badass. Please welcome Amy Dresner. That's right. Amy kiss the Dresner. ring. Kiss the ring, Dylan. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have to have a ring when you ask people to kiss the ring. <laughs> you know what else we could call this show? What? Three depressives and a blonde. <laughs> right, no, because she's like, are you depressive? Because we're all three depressives. And I'm like, no, I'm, I get up and I'm like, yay, I love. That's because you you're not Jewish. That's why. Uh, but are you Jewish, Dylan? Oh, yes. Oh, See? Yeah. Three oh, Jews yes. and a blonde. Well, there you go. There you go. Um, are all Jews... Are all Jews depressed, yes. or is it just the Jews in this room? Uh, not all Jews are, uh, but the, the, <laughs> the intellectual Jews tend to be. Of course. Uh, we read Dostoevsky <laughs> early, and, and we internalize it, and we understand that that is how the world is to be viewed. You know I was born in the former Soviet Union. My parents are full-on uh, Russian Jews, so I actually was handed Dostoevsky at like seven. Uh, so I, I think 
Uh, I think there's a lot of a lot of depression among anyone who's intellectual, anyone who is constantly mm -hmm. thinking, anyone who is constantly trying to deepen their understanding of the world. I think there's likely to be. Yeah, so we're saying you're stupid. Are you having a right now? <laughs> <laughs> you're an airhead. That's why you're I've happy. I've been wax poetic about Archie comic books. You don't know me. I, I can make it sound good. I'm a Betty, by the way. <laughs> oh yes, yeah, sorry. You're the Veronica. You're Trust me. <laughs> Now I'm medicated. I'm less depressed now yeah. that I'm medicated. Right? Are yeah. you medicated? Oh, yeah. For pharmaceuticals. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm actually not medicated for the last 17 months. Doesn't that explain a lot, Jake, mm. in the studio? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, it does. He's nodding. I had to bring cookies to make up for my asshole. Right, right, so I had to bring week. a bottle of Tell wine to the owner. Tell me about your alcoholism. Because <laughs> of your stuff. We, we don't need to go <laughs> into yeah. Let's just say that we're Jews, and okay. we suffer, and sometimes, and hopefully we don't make others suffer. Are you sad right now? Not at this moment, yeah. but as soon as this podcast ends, I will be. Yes. Are you serious? Yeah, th I, I'm only ever happy behind a dick or a microphone. I've explained this to you already. <laughs> it's uh, it's uh, always so shocking you know, when I hear it, though. Because I have a microphone like, tattooed on my dick. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, it's a handy. little, little <laughs> microphone. Oh! <laughs> We're going to go there. Let's go there. Well, Amy uh. Dresner, can we just talk to you for a second about, because you've written a lot about, about depression. depression and, and suicide and attempts. <laughs> suicide attempts <laughs> and uh, medicating oneself mm -hmm. with alcohol and drugs. Mm -hmm. And you write for addiction.com as mm -hmm. well. And so tell me about how, how well do you have to be to write and how sick do you have to get to not be able to write? When I've been writing about my suicide attempts or being in a relapse and putting a needle in my neck or my sex addiction, like that is true at the moment and that's my truth at the moment. And then it changes and it's like, it can only be like what's growing up in public. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like where everyone sees all of your stages and people google it and it's like someone said oh i googled addict and your name came up oh awesome <laughs> like that's the seo for my name is addict jesus christ you know so it's like this stuff's on the internet forever and it's like although i'm sober now and i'm not in that place and i you know haven't been 51 50 in a couple of years um or arrested or you know you know been on tinder <laughs> or any of that stuff it's like that stuff's still out there and people still view you through that lens but it's like I agree with him. You've got to really be open and vulnerable about the pain of it, but you can't be so maudlin and self-pitying because that's just gross. It's like, so I have humor because that's the only way to get through it. You have to laugh at yourself or you don't get through it. I had an experience a, a couple of months ago where I had known someone, and you, you know this person, uh, who on their Facebook had been talking about doing themselves harm. And it had been going, for, you know who I'm talking about a bit. It had been going on for a while, and I grew up with a suicidal mother Oof. and I can tell you I have counted on three handfuls of times that I've come home from school and found her like ah, with pills all over and uh, and knew exactly when the pills would take her out I would do my homework before I would call <laughs> the police <laughs> like, it was like that it was literally was like that so uh, so I didn't confront this person or say anything I just quietly let it go and then uh, about a year later, it took him a year to figure it out, he realized that I had defriended him. And then he uh, Facebook messaged me and said, hey, we're not friends anymore on Facebook. Like, what's going on, right? And I, and I said, you know, I'm going to be completely honest with you. You had talked a lot about self-harm. And I grew up in a terrible situation where mm. my mother and my brother had talked a lot. They did suffer from depression of, of, of self-harm. And it's hard for me to deal with that. And I'm sorry that you're suffering, but you know, you know, it's hard for me. And, and I think you have to realize when you're putting stuff like that on Facebook, even though you're in a lot of pain, that it's hard for other people who are seeing it. And, and then he said, I totally understand what you're saying. Sometimes I get ahead of myself, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but let me ask you this. And this is where it all went, always goes south when someone <laughs> says this. But let me ask you this. <laughs> How come you didn't contact me or say, what's going oh, on? Can I help oh you, boy. right? Because you're posting on Facebook. Yeah, that's, you know, the people who really do it, do it. They don't, like, that's exactly you know, right. talk about it first and say, you know. And also, it's like, anytime I was depressed, I would also, like, make jokes about it. You know, hey, I'm Googling nooses, blah, blah. You know, make some horrible joke about it. But it's right. like, you know, I just, 
I want to just say that I, it does lift and it gets better, yes? Yes. And I'm in a much better place than I have ever been because I've had 20 grand mal seizures from drugs and now I'm a lot stupider so I don't think as much and I'm happier. Mm. <laughs> now, that person that you are talking about is a lunatic. Uh, and he's he's uh, depressive and I understand how difficult that is. And the couple of times that I've had conversations with him about it, I've been as open and as honest and as helpful as I could be. But I had to realize finally when I allowed myself to be uh, as evolved as I can be, I can't save anyone. Mm, you can't. No one can can't. save yeah. anyone. Ding, ding, yeah. ding, 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 ding. And you just have to be as open and generous as you can be. And then when they disappoint you four times and it's just getting too heartbreaking, you got to say, you know what, you're on your own. Well, that's and and then I feel like in a way, growing up with someone who uh, was very suicidal, and my brother had those tendencies as well. Like I can't tolerate. It's very hard for me to tolerate depression of other people sometimes because. And look who you end up. I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> you meet know. your hey, destiny on the road. You I go know. to avoid it. Hey, life <laughs> just a treat for you. Wait a minute. It depression is. was supposed to meet me in Samara. <laughs> All emotional people except Felicia. <laughs> and Radio V. Radio in TV. Radio.